oh well, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Um, I realized it was not recording. It's supposed to stop every half an hour. I don't think it was half an hour. But, um, so, so we're talking about, we are on December 13th at the Audubon Ballroom, December 13th, 1964, and uh, Malcolm presented the crowd with a delicious surprise. A statement of solidarity from Che Guevara, which Malcolm read aloud with pride. Dear brothers and sisters of Harlem, I will have liked to have been with you and Brother Babu, but the actual conditions are not good for this meeting receive the warm salutations of the Cuban people and especially those of Fidel who remembers enthusiastically his visit to Harlem a few years ago united we will win as the audience applauded Malcolm relished the moment the man Malcolm said was in opposition any more to tell blacks who we should applaud for and who we shouldn't applaud for. And you don't see any anti-Castro Cubans around here. We ate them up. Circumstantial evidence provided by James 67X uh, suggested that Malcolm and Guevara briefly met that week in December, although the, oh, this fly is starting to bite. There is no direct evidence Guevara, Guevara's subsequent actions in 1965 can be accurately described as carrying out Malcolm's revolutionary agenda for the continent. The two men were kindred spirits politically a bond revealed not only by the similarity of their worldviews, but by Guevara's subsequent travels. Days after his United Nations speech, Guevara flew to Africa and literally traced Malcolm's steps from Algiers. On January 8th, he, he was in Guinea and from and from July 14 to the 24, he visited Accra. Accra, he met with Julius Nairer, and, and it was through Tanzania that Cuban guerrillas gained safe passage into the eastern provinces of Congo. And only days following Malcolm's assassination, Guevara met with Nasser in Cairo, where he obtained the Egyptian government support for the guerrilla war. That both men eventually met such a, such a violent fate in the name of their struggle and found in death iconic stature as revolutionaries seem only to further bind their legacies. So, well, already it's been like an hour, so uh, I'm going to cut it off right here. Um, so, in, I really believe that um, the passion, um, like they say, these kindred spirits, I think like um, it really opened the eyes for Cuba, for Fidel Castro, to really um, see the Seize, seize the opportunities to liberate uh, more countries in Africa. So, what else I wrote? So, these people who, who, who like, gosh, sorry, people who like say that about that, you know, oh, it's like 
he was preaching love for non-black people. Uh, no, I mean, like, recently, um, Dr. Umar Johnson reminded us that, you know, African countries just gained their independence, you know, a, a few decades ago. So, so this is this is why you know a lot of times we 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 forget that in the Americas, we forget that, and uh, and it's a very uh, crucial piece of the puzzle. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just leaving it like like this. Um, oh gosh, it just, I just started it. I don't want to leave like just five minutes, but um, I don't know. Without looking at it, um, I'm just going to tell you that, you know, one of the things that really don't add up um, is that uh, Manning Marable, um, and I might be repeating myself in the next video, in the last video, hopefully. Um, this fly is very obsessed. I'm going to have to get up. Sorry. So, this, um, so Manning Marable, he, for like 25 years, he was very, very sick. He needed, um, he needed a, a lung transplant and he finally got the transplant and it was very successful. So I really feel like people should be, um, looking into, into the, um, into his death because it was not a suicide. I don't think somebody gonna commit suicide when they're finally healthy because he said it in the, in, in the last page of the book. That's what he said. He said it's like, um, uh, um, he just revealed that, you, you know, and and uh, he was a very good writer. He was a very good writer, and uh, and he actually specialized in Malcolm X. So so he everything shows that that he was a, an admirer of Malcolm X. Everything showed that. So it not, it does it just make no sense that he's gonna be attacking um, Ms. Betty Shabazz and. Oh, there's a lot of flies right there. Well, so it is. It is a lot of. Um, you, 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 you know. Um, what else he said? Um, yeah, he spent years researching. Oh, the other thing uh, that it really um, hit me was was that that the fact that. Um, um, I'm getting distracted because people are staring at me. I'm sorry. Um, oh gosh. Uh, oh, the autobiography of Malcolm X. He he start the last chapter, the last which I don't even know what it's called. You know that when he gives credits and stuff, you know. So he started that by, by saying that uh, the autobiography was Butch. The autobiography was uh, written. I really don't know anything about writing, so I don't really don't I don't I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but um, but the, but he recognized that the the autobiography of Malcolm X was uh, what's it called. You know, it, it just, that's what actually got him to write the book. Because he, he says some things, I mean, I might even have to read it in another video, in the, in the last video. I might just read it because I really don't know how to express that, um, obviously. Uh, so, so he, 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 he saw that there's the sequence and the way that, so, he did not say that there's three chapters missing. So, but I'm sure he knew that three chapters are missing. So it's really weird, that book. Why wouldn't he say that three chapters are missing? Why wouldn't he say that? 
And the last thing I want to talk about, which is really, really spooky and freaky, is that Farrakhan, uh, he got the house. He got the, 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 the Kew Garden house. So, can you imagine? I mean, like, I mean, which tell me that, that he was obsessed with Malcolm. It, it, it sounds more to me like a sick obsession with Malcolm. Because remember that, that, that you know, Malcolm was the one who, who, who saw potential in him. Uh, he didn't, you know, the NOI did not want Farrakhan because he was a musician. And they cannot do that. So, so actually, Malcolm took his time and, um, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know, because they're both light-skinned, I don't know. Um, so, <clears throat> but... Uh, but um, So he got uh, Temple Number no. Seven, which is right here in in in, uh, in Harlem. He got the house. He moved into the house. Obviously, it was after it was um, renovated after the fire. He got uh, what else? He got something like that, you know. Which I mean, really, a lot of times, you know, that point out to. Um, people you know these things are like uh it really point out a lot about to, to 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 the to the it's like a who done it right like they say the who done it and that's what it point out i hope the flies are gone when i come back so and he talk about that you know farrakhan you know uh talk once about that and that he was crying and he was like oh my god i never asked for this i never asked for this oh my god you know i'm getting i'm getting his temple i'm getting his house i'm getting like you know it's just like yeah and uh, i mean and just in case i don't know the the, the first video that i did or i don't know if he got erased before i don't know because he stopped recording i wasn't looking so yeah, I, I kind of like have a, a suspicion that that uh, Miss Betty Shabazz was was killed too by by the FBI. I think she was very um, she was very um, determined to find out and uh, and to continue um, you know, expressing her rage and uh, she, she, I think she became like fixated, you know, um, like she said the same day, you know, February 21st, 1965 at the Audubon Ballroom. They killed my husband, they killed my husband. And, uh, you know, and she kept saying that throughout her life. And, you know, it's very suspicious that she was the only one who got those burns, according to this report. I mean, this writing, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know anything about uh, Miss Betty Shabazz's death, except that she died from, from, from the fire, from the burns. She was in excruciating pain, um, which is kind of like ironic because uh, the Honorable Malcolm X was in several uh, house fires and he came out so yeah and I also said in the first video I don't know if they got deleted how he said that Miss Iliasa Shabazz defended Rudy Giuliani when he got hackle you know at the at the the big church over there by the Riverside Riverside Church and uh, You know, I, I really feel like the whole family is just, is just uh, devastated and they're terrorized. They're terrorized. I mean, to this day, I really believe they continue to be monitored. They continue to be spied on. They continue to, um, you know, it, it was just uh, a lot of, like I say, you know, the, 
a lot of people getting killed at that time and um, it was like whatever like closing the gap or whatever they call it you know not living not living strings so oh it, it is a lot it is a lot you know I'm glad I finished the book I didn't know it was gonna be it's all it's all about the sources you know it's a lot of pages with the sources and the last page that that he said where he talked about himself the writer but he never say how he felt about Malcolm I mean he really don't have to he spent like 30 years of his life researching Malcolm X so for him to put out all this stuff about um, you know affairs and attacking uh, you know Miss Betty Shabazz as bourgeois and whatever you know without even acknowledging what she just went through and her family her, and her daughters I mean it's just beyond and it, and this is stuff that should be like uh, common knowledge to me I really believe this stuff should be common knowledge uh, but it seemed like they've been um, they took control of the narrative of uh, about the assassination of Malcolm X like it said in the book they keep pushing the stories in the television about uh, you know oh it was just uh, it was just some conflict in the NOI you know and um, just tragic all over tragic all over by the way I, I, I created a page on Facebook it said justice for, justice for Malcolm X justice for the Honorable Malcolm X and I wish you like it and, and if you want to be part of administrator I need I need a, a lot of administrators because we need to keep pushing for justice uh, they've been getting away with this murder, the United States government. <clears throat> they've been getting away for too long. There need to be justice. There need to be uh, for the whole family, including the murder of uh, Miss Betty Shabazz, which is what I really think happened. Uh, it's just too much, it's too much, you know. Uh, her grandson being killed in Mexico City I mean it just it just like you know you know I mean even I remember when um, I forgot that the oldest daughter uh, she tried to hire somebody to to kill Farrakhan and that whole media spectacle in the 90s so that that should be like you know she actually tried to hire somebody to kill Farrakhan and it turned out to be that somebody it turned out to be an FBI agent. I mean, what did that tell you right there? The FBI is hovering. The family is still, you know, it, it just, you know, it's too much, it's too much, you know. Uh, rest in power, King um, Malcolm X, and, and peace to, to his family and, and black power to all of you. The original kings and queens, the original people of the planet. Um, it's time to end this mafia. It's time to to go back to the the, the order, the the rightful, you know, the, the natural order of things. The, everything is unnatural that we live in. Everything is unnatural. Everything is artificial. You know. It, it, it just, the proof is that we are destroying, we destroy the planet already. It's destroyed. It's destroyed already. I mean, you know, burning, the Amazon's burning for more than two weeks. Uncontrollable burning. You know, the last long, that was, uh, that was 20% of the oxygen. So... It's time to give a damn. It's time to go out with a bang. Thank you for watching.